Lesson 22, I will add or subtract a fraction from a whole number using decomposition and visual models. All right, so we are going to start talking about adding or subtracting a fraction from a whole number. So for example, if I add a whole number, like let's just take the whole number three, for example, and I was going to add a fraction, which might be one fourth, we're gonna talk about what that would look like. And we're also gonna talk about well, what would happen if we subtracted a whole number or a fraction from a whole number. We're going to use two strategies here. We're going to decompose and we're also going to use visual models. Now today because we're using three different strategies we're just going to go ahead and get right straight to our problem set so that we don't spend a whole lot of time working in our journal today. Alright so in your problem set we're going to begin using that visual model. So we're going to start by drawing a tape diagram. That's our visual model. So it says we're going to add three plus one third using a tape diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my tape diagram now. This is going to be something completely new. I want you to notice that I'm making the tape diagram kind of long. I want you to do that also. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label part of this three holes. Okay, so I'm going to label this three. Here's three. And I'm going to divide this into three parts. So this is one hole, this is one hole, this is one hole. Now I'm going to take each of these and divide them into thirds. So here is three thirds, and you notice I'm using dotted lines here so that we can see the difference. Three thirds, three thirds, and then we're going to say that this is one third, even though it's kind of large compared to the other thirds. So here is three, and here's one third. Altogether, I have three and one third. Okay, pretty simple. All right, let's try B. So now we're going to have four and three fourths. I'm going to go ahead and make this kind of big. And then I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to call the end here three fourths. And then I'm going to call the rest of this four holes. I'm going to divide it into four parts, and each part will be one hole. So I've got one hole, one hole, one hole, one hole. And I'm going to divide these into fourths. Okay? Now I'm going to use these decomposition lines like this because if I don't, it's going to be hard to tell the difference. It's going to look like I have 1 16th instead of force here. Okay, so I have 4 force, 4 force, 4 force. 4 fourths, and then down here I'm going to have 3 fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label this 3 fourths. So now I have 4 whole plus 3 fourths, which is 4 and 3 fourths. That's pretty simple to understand. You just add them together. Now let's talk about the part that can be a little bit confusing for kids. We're going to talk about subtraction. I think it's pretty simple to see what's happening when you use a visual model though. Alright, so we're going to start by with three holes. We're not going to add a fourth because remember we're taking away. So we're going to start with three hole like this. So I'm going to take one, two, three. So all of this would be three. Now I'm not going to divide all of these into fours. Actually I might anyways. Alright so let's divide these into fours like this. Okay, so I have four fourths, four fourths, four fourths. Now, do you see why I chose to divide these by into fourths? That's because I was taking away a fourth. So if I take away one of these, and whenever you're modeling subtraction, you usually use an X or something to mark out. What do I have left? Well, I have this hole and this hole. So this would be two holes and one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. So I have two and three fourths left. Okay, let's try that one more time. Alright, so this time we're going to model 5. So notice that I'm making my tape diagram nice and big because I don't want to try to squish everything in there. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and divide this into 5 parts. So that's going to mean 4 lines. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so all together I have 5 holes. This is not fists, these are 5 holes. 1 hole, 2 hole, 3 holes, 4 holes, 5 holes. Now, 
I'm not going to take the time to go ahead and divide every single one of these into fifths. There's really no reason to, okay? Because I'm not going to do anything to these four holes. I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to divide this last one into five parts. I'm going to draw four lines. One, two, three, four. Again, notice that I'm using these dotted lines. If you go through here and just start drawing regular lines, you're not going to be able to tell what's left. You're not going to be able to tell what's a hole and what's not. But with these dotted lines, it's really easy to tell that whenever I take away two fifths, I'm going to mark out two. One, two, three, two. So here's what I'm left with. One, two, three, four holes and one, two, three fifths. So I have four and three fifths left over. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> now we're going to be writing a couple of fact families. We've done this once before, but just remember that we've got six and three eighths, six and three eighths. So here's my big number, six and three eighths. So I like to think of this as a number bond like this. So six and three eighths would be six and three eighths together. These make six and three eighths. So if I'm going to write two subtraction and two addition number sentences, well, when I add these together, I'm going to get six and three eighths. So I can start with six plus three eighths equals six and three eighths. And then I can reverse these three eighths plus six equals six and three eighths. Okay. Now, if I start with six and three eighths and I take away six, I'm going to be left with three eighths. So I'm going to say six. I'm going to draw a line right here. Six and three eighths minus six equals three eighths. Now, if I start with six and three eighths and I take away three eighths, I'm left with six. Okay, why don't you try to see if you can do this one by yourself? Think of it like nine is your whole, and then you've got eight and three sevenths and four sevenths together make nine holes. How could you make two addition sentences and two subtraction sentences? Pause the video and do as much as you can, and then let's come back and check together. All right, so according to our number bond here, when I add these two together, I get nine. So I've got eight and three sevenths plus four sevenths equals nine. Four sevenths plus eight and three sevenths equals nine. There's my two addition. Now my subtraction, I always have to start with a large number. So nine minus eight and three sevenths equals four sevenths. Nine minus four sevenths equals eight and three sevenths. So if you didn't get any of these right, just go ahead and erase what you did and go ahead and fix it. All right, let's take a look at three. Solve using a number bond. Draw a number line to represent each number sentence. The first one has been done for you. So let's take a look at what they did. They took their whole number and look at what they divided it into. They separated one whole and they made it into a fraction. So they took, they had four holes. They took one hole and made it three thirds because they were going to take away a third. And then they left the other three intact. And then all they did was take away one third away from the three thirds and that left three and two thirds. Let's see if we can't do that. So if we took five and we took out one hole, that would leave four holes. And then we took the other one and we made it into three thirds. So this is still five. Now I can just take two thirds and subtract it from three thirds. And that gives me one third. So I have four and one third. Now let's show that on a number line. Now you'll notice on their number line over here, they didn't go from zero to four. They went from three to four. So let's go from four to five. And because we're dealing with thirds, we're going to partition it into thirds. And this will be four and one third, four and two thirds, and then four and three thirds. So we start at five and we went back two thirds. And we ended up with four and one third. Okay, so let's try these two. So again, remember our learning target is that we were going to use visual models. That's the number line. And we're also using decomposition. When we use the number bond, we're decomposing this whole into two parts. We're breaking it down into two parts. So we're going to decompose this seven into six holes and eight eighths. Do you see why I chose eighths? Because I'm taking away three eighths. 
this is still 7. 6 plus 1 is 7. Now I'm just going to subtract 3 eighths from 8 eighths, and that's going to leave 5 eighths. So now I have 6 and 5 eighths. So let's show that on a number line here. So again, I'm only going to do from 6 to 7. And because we're talking about eighths, I'm going to partition this into eight parts. So I'm going to start with fourths and then divide each one in half. Okay, so I'm going to start with seven. And I'm not going to label all of these, but I am going to start here at seven. I'm going to go back three eighths, one, two, three. So I'm going to go start here. And this is going to put me at six and one eighths, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, six and five eighths. All right, why don't you see if you can do as much of D all by yourself? Pause the video. If you get stuck, you can always press play and I will help you. But if you need, if you can, try to do as much of it by yourself as you can. So pause the video now. Okay, so hopefully you stopped the video and you began by decomposing 10 into 9 holes and 10 tenths. So this is still equal to 10. Here's 9, here's 1. Together they make 10. So we've got 10 tenths and we can subtract 4 tenths, and that's going to leave us with 6 tenths. So now I have 9 holes and 6 tenths. So let's represent that with a number line. So here's my number line. I'm going to start with 9, and I'm going to go to 10, and I'm going to divide these into 10 parts. I'm going to start by dividing them into 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4 lines makes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parts. So I'm just going to go through here and divide each of these in half. And now I have 10 parts. So I'm going to start at 10, and I'm going to go back 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to put me right here. And this is 9 and 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths. 9 and 6 tenths. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Complete the subtraction sentences using number lines. So we're doing the exact same thing that we did in the last part, except we don't have to draw a number line this time. We're just going to use number bonds to decompose. So we're going to start with decomposing this whole number into 2 and 10 tenths. So it's still 3. Now I'm going to subtract 1 tenth, and that's going to leave 9 tenths. So I have 2 and 9 tenths. Why don't you try to do as much of these next three problems as you can by yourself and then come back and check with me. So pause the video now and do as much as you can by yourself. If you get stuck, just press play and I will walk you through it. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you decompose this 5 into 4 and 4 fourths. 4 fourths minus 3 fourths equals 1 fourth. So you have 4 and 1 fourth. All right, let's take a look at C. So now we have 6, which is 5 and 8 eighths. If I take 5 eighths away from 8 eighths, I'm left with 3 eighths. So I have 5 and 3 eighths. For D, I'm going to decompose this into 6 and 9 ninths. 9 ninths minus 3 ninths is 6 ninths. So I have 6 and 6 ninths. All right, let's try two more. Again, try to do these by yourself. See how far you can get without any help. So pause the video now and see how much you can do. All right, so for 8, I'm going to make this 7 and 10 tenths. 10 tenths minus 6 tenths is 4 tenths. So I have 7 and 4 tenths. For F, I'm going to make this 28 and 12 twelfths. So it's still 29. 12 twelfths minus 9 twelfths is 3 twelfths, and I have 28 left over. So I have 28 and 3 twelfths. Okay? All right, so today we subtracted using, we subtracted a fraction from a whole number. And we use decomposition on the last few. This is the most efficient way, but if that's confusing to you, you could always use a number line as a visual model, or you could always come back and you could use a tape diagram like we did here to be able to model exactly what we're doing.